Good evening to you. Mark Sabbath Hurricane Track here, Monday now, the 18th of August, 2025. Great to be back with you after spending the weekend generally away from everything, at least as much as one can be away from everything with the availability of technology. Had some time with my wife for our anniversary, but now it is time to get back to work and get ready to go to the Outer Banks. I will talk about that at the end of today's update. Of course, we have Aaron out there. We've got another area that we need to watch, but the biggest part of today's update, the most emphasis that I'm going to place on everything, is that word impacts. What to expect from Aaron. These impacts explained, we all talk about out to sea, fish storm, indirect impacts. Yeah, that may be true that the core, hurricane force winds, the eye, whatever, will not make it to the United States, but that is going to matter little when we are done with this because the extent of the beach erosion and the wave action especially for eastern North Carolina, is going to be substantial, and we need to address that. And just make sure everybody understands, turning away from the United States, fish storm, does not equate to no impacts at all. So let's dig in and see what we learn together. First, off the interactive tracking map, indeed, a lot has happened since we last got together. There is the track when it was very, very strong, making it to Category 5. Luckily, that happened north and east away from the land masses, but a lot of very heavy rain got dragged through this area down here. Uh, not too many problems, major power outages, but it was not long term enough to create major flooding problems, which is certainly good news. But now Aaron is going to feel the effects of the weakness up here over the northwest Atlantic. It's going to turn around the western extent of the big Bermuda High sitting out here and away into the open ocean, the core of the hurricane and most of its wind will go. However, there will be substantial waves. They're already starting to be generated and those radiate out and they will eventually reach the coastlines up here and we are going to have significant problems. Beach Patrol, hey, I told you when I last saw you on Friday, make sure you got some rest over the weekend because you're going to need it. I uh, saw already in Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina, dozens of beach rescues just in the last, maybe just today, and it is going to get worse from here. It is all about the impacts. Even if the core does not come over, seriously, we have to unlearn this whole notion of the center must pass over me for it to count. Because believe me, too many people have been buried over the years because they died in rip currents from distant hurricanes and that is a problem we need to make that number zero so I'm going to do my part to help you here satellite imagery is what it looks like it's getting a little bit disheveled it's a huge wind machine pretty low pressure in the center category four on the last report probably weaker than that now but that's wind and pressure and all that it's a big giant wave generator and boy oh boy is it going to send that energy into the Atlantic it's been, it has been doing it and it will continue to do so. We're going to look at Hurricane Center products in just a minute. Real quick, though, looking at the overall ensemble suite, not really ensembles, but some of these are ensemble means in here. The models, the spaghetti models, people like to call them that, very tightly clustered overall, all through the trajectory of the path here. I know there's been a lot of angst that this kept moving west and west and west of the forecast track. That is not going to change the upper level pattern up here. And let me make one thing very clear. I've seen... Again, tried to get away for a few days and not focus too entirely much on tropical stuff as I'm spending time with my wife, but I peeked in from time to time on social media to see what was going on and a lot of hemming and hawing every now and then about the track and what the Hurricane Center might say or do. Trust me, the Hurricane Center does not make forecasts for the amusement or the approval of social media, you know? Uh, somebody, whatever, underscore 17532, you know, these random people that have some negative comment that the Hurricane Center is doing this or they missed that or whatever. None of that matters. It doesn't. What matters is the end game. And when it's push come to shove, the men and women that work down there at the National Hurricane Center are the best in the world. And the models that they have to work with, including a lot of the consensus models, and now there's some new AI models coming in, Yes, you're going to get deviations and off track a little bit in the short term. That'll happen in especially intense hurricanes. You get these wobbles. But in the end, the forecast is going to be right on. And they, they do a verification at the end of each year. And you can read all of that and see how well they do. 
I don't have a dog in that fight. I'm friends with them down there, but it's not like I own stock in some company and I'm trying to build it up. They are the best, and this is what is going to happen with the center. But in that same breath, we will see a giant wind field out here that's going to move up and eventually out into the Atlantic. And boy, again, the waves and the swells that's going to generate. A lot of surfers are going to like it, but it is going to pose problems, all of that. All right? Already causing some problems that are avoided. This is a great post here from Matt Devitt down at Wink TV. Notice this big hole. I wonder what's there. I wonder what's causing all of these ships. No, this is not flight aware. This is our marine traffic. Sort of a water-based version of flight aware, right? And uh, yeah, there's a, there's a hurricane sitting in here. And so the ships are avoiding it as best they can, which is a good thing because this is a beastly system, a very large uh, hurricane indeed. So one of the things about it that's interesting too, notice how we have already taken a little bit of a chunk out of the anomalies through here. It almost looks like the shape of a hurricane with a little eye in there, doesn't it? Pretty wild. It's just a complete coincidence, believe me. But you can almost see spiral banding in there. I'll be darned. I just noticed that, to be honest with you. But that is what these hurricanes do. They chew away uh, upper ocean heat content, expend it out into the atmosphere, and it bleeds off that energy. And this will continue on and on and on as Aaron makes that trek up into the Atlantic. And man, I'm telling you, this is going to help to reduce some of those very positive anomalies in the far north Atlantic, probably helping to make the southern tropics more favorable as we get into September and October. But you know what? Let's worry about that later. This will be an interesting map to track. This is what it's done now, taking some of those anomalies away. This is what it has to work with over the next couple of days. Much warmer than average water temperatures, so it'll at least maintain. Wind field will broaden out. Even, even if it does weaken, which it probably will, it's such a huge area to keep going. Like Sandy, in terms of the big wind field, Sandy back in 2012, this will have far-reaching effects well beyond the core or the eye. So you see that track way offshore, please don't be fooled by that, especially in eastern North Carolina where they do have evacuations on the Outer Banks, and for good reason. A couple things to point out. Obviously, this is the vorticity signature of powerful Hurricane Aaron. We'll be watching this area of energy as well as it comes to the west and west-northwest with time. A lot of speculation as Aaron goes out. Do we have a weakness that remains and this system comes and follows? Does it stay a little weaker and come more west? Don't know. Have no idea. We will worry about that more later. One more thing just in terms of modeling. This is the latest from the GFS, the 18Z run. This is our hurricane at the 5,000 uh, 5, foot level, 850 millibars. Large area of energy sitting out here. But you know what? Let's switch this just for the time being to the 10 meter wind. So 10 meters, that's about 33 feet or so above the ground. And look at that big wind field. And then look as it expands with Aaron moving north. Maybe getting tropical storm force winds. That's your 34 knot area right there, that green. One thing that's really interesting, and we're going to look at this in the Hurricane Center discussion. I've already looked at it, so I'm a little ahead of everything. The models and the overall guidance and everything might not be understanding the enormity of this wind field. And so it won't surprise me to see the North Carolina Outer Banks have some pretty strong wind, and that'll help to usher in those big waves that are going to do some damage, especially at the times of high tide. All right, so let's look at what's very, very important here. The impacts. From the National Hurricane Center homepage, there is a plethora of very helpful information right down here. Everything from the key messages, which is a great summarization of everything, a summary. Summarization? I think that's a word. Storm surge information, not too relevant with our situation now. Uh, but then this is your peak surge. That can be helpful. Experimental stuff. Rainfall potential going to be you know, negligible uh, at the coast and so forth. But it's this one right here. And I'm going to highlight it in red, at least box it. Rip currents. This, you know, this term, we hear it all the time. Indirect impacts. Indirect impacts from Aaron, from whoever. Well, the hurricane caused them. They came in. And while it not, might not be the rain bands or the core or whatever, I still think that rip currents are part of the overall impacts package. 
That's me personally, and maybe some people at the Hurricane Center would agree with that, because the hurricane is causing the swells that come out, the rip currents result at uh, the beachfront there, and they do kill people do these rip currents, and we have to make that number a big fat zero. That would make me very happy. Uh, and we can do so just by simply respecting what is happening. If you're heading down to the beaches this next few days, probably the next five days uh, of the East Coast, you want to look at this, this main graphic right here. It spells out on this new interactive map that the Hurricane Center has developed where the rip current threats are high. Uh, and this will start to expand. Tomorrow it's going to be pretty much the entirety of the East Coast from Florida all the way up a little break here in parts of the Delmarva region and even up here in Long Island and out into southeastern New England because of the hurricane. High rip current threat. And hopefully the red flags will be uh, flying, what is it, double red flags, and they'll just close the beaches. I know it sucks. People like the beach, but hey, you know, you got to stay alive. And if you stay out of the water, the rip currents can't affect you. Let me put it another way. If this were red indicating a high probability of major shark activity, whew, boy, people would be out of the water and it would be a done deal. Yet, rip currents kill far more people than sharks do, and yet when we see something about sharks, the purple flags, meaning marine life, among other things, in the water, uh, people get very upset about it, you know? And uh, maybe it's from the movie Jaws, which, by the way, is 50-year anniversary coming up. I don't know how that works, how the human psyche works. You don't necessarily see dead people from rip currents. And I know we're being graphic here, but seriously, you've seen news reports, photographs, it's probably easily searchable on the Internet, of shark attacks, which are very, very rare. Rip currents are not. 50 rescues, something like that today, just in Wrightsville Beach. If there were 50 encounters with sharks, that would be it for the economy down here, to be honest with you. So we got to respect this kind of a feature uh, and impact from nature, just like we would if it was our marine foe. It's a predator. I mean, we got to respect that. If this were sharks, everybody would be paying attention. So please do that. Please pay attention. Now, what about uh, exact impacts in terms of waves and surge and that kind of thing? Two to four feet of uh, inundation is possible from the North Carolina Outer Banks, from Duck to Cape Lookout. The inland areas, uh, maybe one to three feet or so. Uh, inland areas over here, the sounds and uh, parts of uh, up the rivers here in uh, the southeast Virginia area, the southern part of the Chesapeake Bay, and uh, even down the beaches of um, New Hanover, Onslow, Horry County, is Georgetown, because of the massive wind field that will send all of that energy towards the coast. And the, uh, combine that with onshore flow as the hurricane passes by, this will be a big problem. We could see some property damage. Now, I do want to go back to the Hurricane Center homepage uh, explicitly and click on the forecast discussion. And I want to read some of this to you for you to understand what they are thinking. I haven't referenced this much at all this year, uh, and I need to do it more as we go forward, to be honest with you. Lots of information in here. This is written by Dr. Richard Pash, uh, who I know personally, been there for a long time, Dr. Pash. And so when you see all these paragraphs, four paragraphs from Dr. Pash, you know something's pretty heavy going on out there. He tends to be a little bit less wordy, we'll just say. So this is pretty important that you see this kind of information here. One thing that I want to note is the last paragraph right here. It says, Aaron's uh, continued expanding wind field will result in rough ocean conditions over much of the western Atlantic. It should be noted, Dr. Pash says, that the 34 and 50 knot wind speed probabilities beyond three days in the text and graphical products are likely underestimating the risk of those winds occurring. Why? This is because the forecast wind field of Aaron is considerably larger. It's forecast to be considerably larger than average compared to the wind field used to derive the product. So we are truly looking at an anomalous event. So we have to treat it as such. This is a big deal. This is worth hyping up. This is going to cause problems. Believe me, it is not the same as a hurricane making landfall. But when this is done, people will look back at it and go, Man, that was pretty impactful. It's coming. The science tells us so. The data tells us so. And in fact, we're working outside the lines 
just a little bit and things could be a little bit worse than we were expecting overall. Let me get back to the tracking map because I want to show you what I'm going to do. So I grew up in eastern North Carolina, know the area very, very well. We have several cameras already positioned uh, permanently sitting out, uh, for example, on the Outer Banks. These are in Rodanthe. And as these populate, you can take a look. Some people out there, look at the big swells already coming in. This camera looks to the south. Really appreciate Terry out there and Brad helping out to keep these things clean, up and running and maintained, and our crowdfunding folks through Patreon just to fund all of this. Uh, so we'll be monitoring these. And the good thing is the weather should be okay so that we won't lose power, hopefully. But just in case, and to augment the overall coverage, I am going to head out there shortly after doing this video, and I'm going to work with Brad, our friend sitting out here in the Rodanthe area, and we're going to set up some cameras along the area. Don't know exactly where. Some of that I'm going to keep close to the chest for you know proprietary reasons, and you'll see them when they're up. But we're going to bring several, and we're going to put them in some places where we're really going to see these impacts over the next several days. And then whether or not I stay right out here in Rodanthe at a good friend of our project's house remains to be seen. If the waves and the surge and whatever is really bad, I don't want my Tacoma flooded and I don't want to be stuck because I feel like there's a good chance that parts of Pea Island up here south of the Baz Knight Bridge used to be the Bonner Bridge. I think some of this could overwash and I think and, and get cut off. Lose the road through here. This area we've got the new Jug Handle Bridge and that has alleviated a lot of the problems. It looks like a jug handle goes around like that. Further down, though, we have problems probably for Buxton and eventually Ocracoke uh, certainly could be under the gun. And then these are uninhabited barrier islands down here. But the Outer Banks are going to take a beating. That is why they are there. Nature put them there as barrier islands. Hello. People live on them. You can debate that all you like, whether or not they should. I don't know, should there be 9 billion people on the planet? You want to go down that road? They do live out there. They have to go through this. They provide a lot for the economy. Give them a break. A lot of them are hardworking fishermen and tourist folks and whatnot, and this matters to them. Generations and generations. So I'm going to head out uh, again shortly after I do this, and we'll set stuff up, and we shall see what happens. By the way, I am also concerned for New Bern and some of these areas where the wind could get funneled in over time with any kind of overwash that happens and starts to fill the Pamlico Sound more. Washington, New Bern, some of these little creeks down here, Clubfoot Creek somewhat you know, near Havelock, could have some problems there too. All right, covered a lot. Good to be back with you. Like I said, I got some stuff to do. And then I will hit the road and make my way up to the Outer Banks. We'll have live coverage over the next few days on our YouTube and, of course, I'll be doing lots and lots of interactions with our friends at Fox Weather. And they've got people out there as well, Mike Sidell up in Kitty Hawk. And we'll be just all over this really explaining these impacts here. Even though we're not going to get anywhere close to a direct hit, it's not going to matter. This is going to end up being a pretty big deal. We are all very confident of that. All right. Thanks for tuning in. That's it for me. I'm Mark Suddeth. I'll talk to you next on my way to the Outer Banks.